Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Deborah Bird. You're here with Earth Sky, and we're here with Dr. Sam Badman, who's a heliophysicist. He's a scientist who studies the sun at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And Sam researches the structure of the sun's extended atmosphere, which is that fiery corona that many of us saw during the April 8th total solar eclipse. So his work combines numerical models, uh, also observations, and in particular, uh, observations from sun observing spacecraft like Solar Orbiter and Parker Solar Probe. Sam, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, well, we're so glad you're here. So your team has made a discovery about the solar wind. Um, can you tell me what is the solar wind? Yes, so um, here on Earth, we live in a, a neutral atmosphere protected by a magnetic field. And outside of that is open space. And we might think of that as empty, but actually it's full of plasma that's whizzing, whizzing past us. And all that plasma has been thrown off by the sun. So the sun, because it's so hot, it basically heats up its atmosphere so much that it, the gas just streams away from it, escapes over gra from gravity. Um, and so it just fills this region of the space called the heliosphere. Um, and so that's the solar wind. It's basically the medium that all the planets in our solar system live in. Yeah, so the heliosphere refers to the whole sphere of the sun's influence, right? So it's extending out through the whole solar system, correct? Yeah, yeah. So in this fact, solar wind... Way the solar wind is blowing outward through the entire solar system. Yeah. And in fact, the solar wind is what creates the heliosphere. So where, oh. where it ends is basically where the, the solar wind is basically being um, coming into pressure, uh, e coming to equilibrium with the gas that fills the galaxy. So in the, uh, the interstellar medium is a different gas and the boundary between that and our own plasma is, is the boundary of the heliosphere. So yeah, I always wondered about that. Is it like the sun is kind of blowing out a bubble? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, okay, so that's the heliosphere. So the solar wind is going through that whole heliosphere, but how about for us on Earth? Like why should we care about the solar wind? Yes, yeah, so the, the solar wind is a, um, a plasma which uh, basically channels everything that the sun throws out into space. Um, and so it's this flow that's going past the Earth, and because the Earth has a magnetic field, it keeps most of it out most of the time. But when something changes suddenly, or when something is injected at the sun and travels along um, and interrupts the steady uh, flow, um, it can shake our magnetosphere, and it can give some of that plasma access to, our, to the Earth. And so that's what causes the aurora, and it's what causes um, effects with it, with, that, we, that we can see on Earth. So. Um, it can cause currents in the ground. It can uh, cause GPS to go to go wonky. Um, and so the way that we kind of prepare for that is by uh, trying to model better um, what we call space weather, um, where the solar wind is the medium that we're trying to model, much like we try to measure model the Earth's atmosphere for doing normal weather. Yeah, and so we've had a couple people on this live stream talking about space weather. We had a space weather forecaster who works with NOAA, and we've had another heliophysicist or two. And uh, at one point we had a guy that was an expert in electric grids, tell us why we're not gonna get knocked back to the 17th century, which many people think, uh, you know, in the case of large solar storms. So yeah, so this that's what we're talking about. We're talking about this solar wind from the sun and there's like a slow wind and a fast wind right yeah so when we uh stuck spacecraft out there in the uh in the uh, 60s and 70s um for the first time we measured how fast it was going and where we are at earth that changes over time and the range the rough range that we see is somewhere between 200 to 800 kilometers per second um, and for reference, a satellite goes around the Earth around seven kilometers a second, and an airplane goes about 20 times slower than that. So, you know, hundreds of no. times faster than anything we see on Earth. Um, but so the range is from like 200 at the, at the lowest, or um, which we call slow wind, and then when it crosses the threshold around 500 or so, um, that we call that fast wind. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, 
it's, it's, yeah. it's classified what we measure at Earth is, is the main thing. And so it's my understanding that the fast wind doesn't start out fast and that the mystery is what makes it go so fast, right? Right, yeah. So all the solar wind is starting from being gas that is part of the sun. Um, and the sun itself obviously is not uh, is not moving. Um, so everything is starting from a standstill basically. Um, but the sun's heat causes that gas to expand and move outwards and accelerate. And uh, what basically happens is that a lot of that acceleration happens quite low down in the corona. Um, but what we see is that after it escapes the corona and the sun's like massive heat is no longer the main power source, it continues gaining energy. Um, so it gets faster with distance um, and it also um, doesn't cool as quickly as you'd expect if you just kind of took the gas that escaped from the sun and let it go. Um, so both of these are oscillational effects which become more and more difficult to explain the faster the wind is at, at Earth. You okay, so energy source. is that what you just discovered or is that what we knew all along about the solar wind? So we knew we, we knew we knew those two facts the heating and the acceleration were happening mm -hmm. um but we didn't know where the energy was coming to to basically close that question so some extra energy we needed to quantify in order to know how how to explain that evolution mm -hmm. okay and so uh so 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 i'm i'm a grandma <laughs> so tell me like you would tell your grandma um, what happened in February of 2022? Right. So in the last um, six years, there's been two launches of major space missions, one from NASA called Parker Solar Probe and one from ESA in 2020 called Solar Orbiter. And they both went into the heliosphere. They left the Earth system and they go close to the sun. Um, the Parker Solar Probe dips all the way down to just five solar diameters from the sun. Um, and so it's getting right to the edge of what we're, what is calling the corona. And Solar Orbiter, meanwhile, is doing an orbit that gets about uh, it gets about a third of the distance to the sun. And at the time of this study, it was hovering around Venus, which is a little more than halfway to the sun. Um, and what we, what happened in February then was that both of these spacecraft crossed over each other at just the right place that the plasma passing by Parker Solar Probe later ends up being measured half the way from the sun at Solar Orbiter. And so they both carry all these instruments which measure a ton of properties about the plasma. The things we care about are the magnetic fields, the uh, the density, how hot it is, and how fast it's moving. And so we took those data and we could see the same properties at one, same properties at the other, and we looked at the evolution. So what we could tell then is, as we, as we expect, um, the solar wind had got um, faster by the time it had moved from Parker to Solar Orbiter, and it hadn't uh, and it had received heat energy. So it wasn't as cold as you'd expect based on what it's done. Sorry, that um, was my phone. I thought I had yeah. turned it off. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, and so basically the, the other piece then was, so if you looked at the energy there, we couldn't quite uh, explain all the energy that was in the plasma and solar orbiter based on Parker if we just considered those two things I said, the heat and the, and the speed. And what we could see at Parker was big waves in the magnetic field. Um, these are things that were discovered by Parker Solar Probe to exist basically everywhere close to the sun. Um, so we've been seeing that these things exist for a while, but here we have the chance to actually ask how much energy is in there and is it compatible with this extra energy that we need? And so that's basically the investigation we did. We found that that energy was about 10% of all the energy that was in the plasma at Parker. And at Solar Orbiter, it had dropped to around 1%. So that is enough to explain this missing piece that we, we were looking for. Cool. So, so basically, those two spacecraft were lined up in such a way that, that they could both take the measurement at the same time. And so you, could, you were able to figure out, you were able to confirm what the mechanism is for creating this fast solar wind. Right. Yeah, we were able to yeah. quantify. Uh, yeah. OK. And there's something about switchbacks? Yes. Two? So, right. So the, the, the magnetic energy source that I just mentioned, these waves, um, are where the magnetic field line 
is is basically um, similar to lines. Normally, if they're low, if they're in the lower tensile state, they um, are basically straight. And what we see close to the sun is that this, these magnetic field lines bend bend significantly. And sometimes they bend so much that they bend back on themselves briefly, and they make this S shape. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. that is something we termed switchbacks. Um, and that is basically another way to describe what we're calling in this paper large amplitude alpha waves. Um, so they are a structure that uh, is carrying energy close to the sun, but they uh, they've lost all that energy further from the sun, and that energy is, is important to understanding how the solar wind works. Cool. So I liked what you said in your press release about that this work isn't just important to what we know about the sun, but it has a wider importance. Could you tell us about that? Right. So the sun is what's called a G-type star. And um, we often forget because it's so different to every other point of light in the sky, but it is an example of many other types of stars out there in the universe. Um, and it's a kind of middle-aged star called a main sequence type. And uh, one thing that these stars have are winds. So we call our, wind, uh, our sun's wind the solar wind, but other stars have stellar winds. And in particular, because the sun's magnetic field is very important, it's a magnetized so, um, medium. So we can think about understanding how the solar wind works. It will tell us about how other magnetized stellar winds work. Um, cool. And and the thing, the thing that's fun to note there is that this is the only star in the universe that we can literally send probes into the medium and like, pick up. <laughs> that's the right. So far. So far, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I really appreciate it. I, I, we, we grabbed Sam at the last minute this morning and we were excited about his work and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. So thank you. And we're going to ask you to hang on for one minute because uh, our platform here needs to upload. So don't go away. But uh, it, I, I want to say that we've been speaking with Dr. Samuel Badman, who's a solar astrophysicist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And we hope you'll join us every Friday for Sun News of the Week. We just started this new feature, Sun News of the Week, every Friday at 12.15 uh, p.m. Central or 17.15 UTC. So uh, also, please join us this Monday, September 2nd, when we'll be talking about the fact that Saturn's rings are disappearing. So we hope to see you then. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. <laughs>